If you're a trader, you're probably wondering, what does the BISC Dow mean for me? What actually changes? The short answer is not much. There's one notable item that you'll notice on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's trading fees. And it's not so much a change as it is a choice. Because when the BISC Dow launches, you'll be able to choose to pay trading fees with plain Bitcoin, just like you are now, or with BSQ. Now in the beginning, BSQ trading fees will be much lower to encourage people to use it and jumpstart the DAO, but the choice will be yours. But I want to be very clear about one thing. Lower trading fees are not the reason for BSQ to exist. BSQ exists to allow traders to pay contributors directly for their work without any central points of control. And we've explained exactly how in the previous videos in the series. But why should you as a trader care? Why should you care that BIS contributors are compensated at all? After all, most open source projects don't have any mechanism to pay their contributors. There's usually no revenue model at all. So why does BISC? There's two reasons for this. The first is to enable continual professional development and support. While BISC does not ever have custody of your money, it does help to arrange and coordinate payments. And sometimes, rarely, things don't go as expected. There could be a bug in the software, the deal itself might not go according to plan, and having developers and support available to reliably squash bugs and help you handle these situations is important. Peace of mind. The second is to help BISC become the best version of itself. BISC cannot provide sovereignty to you if it's not sovereign itself. Every project needs to be financially and strategically sustainable, viable, so that it can grow. And by having its own revenue model, BISC can grow on its own and become the best it can be. To hopefully, I hope one day, become the go-to censorship-resistant fiat-to-crypto marketplace that's stateless, sovereign, free as can be, so that you can trade how you want to trade. The world needs that. Now, we've spoken all about BSQ fees and how they work, but what about plain Bitcoin fees? What if you choose to continue paying plain Bitcoin for trading fees after the launch of the DAO. Where do those fees go? The answer is, the answer for now is that they'll go to BISC arbitrators. That's where Bitcoin fees go right now. But of course that means that BISC developers and all the people who do design and support and documentation and everything else for the project will continue to not be paid. So you'll be paying to use BISC but your payments won't help to sustain the project. And furthermore, a little bit after the DAO launch, BISC will be launching a new trade protocol. This protocol is going to remove arbitrators. And so Bitcoin fees won't go to arbitrators anymore since they won't be around. And what happens to them is still an open question. There's a proposal to buy BSQ with that Bitcoin, there's another proposal to simply donate those fees to other open software projects. It's not really clear what's going to happen to those fees. So the best thing is to use BSQ to pay trading fees. You'll still be paying Bitcoin. You can only buy BSQ with Bitcoin, but your Bitcoin will go directly to a contributor to compensate them for their work and in the process help to sustain the whole project. One last thing, voting. This is a totally voluntary element of the DAO. You only participate if you like, but you might want to if you want to have a say in BISC strategy. And this is because on BISC, you're not a prisoner or a slave to a corporation. You're a user, a part of the network. And so you're free to propose changes, actually encouraged to propose changes that you want to see in the software you use. Now. All policies debated and decided in the DAO, 
and some of it might be obscure development related stuff that you don't really care about. But there could be items like adding or removing assets, changing trade parameters, trade limits, deposits, and other things that affect your experience on BISC that you might want to influence. So just be aware that the tools are there for you to use. Now, as for the process of making proposals, it's pretty simple. Uh, we've made a video and a written doc to walk you through it, and I'll link to both in the description below. The only other thing to, to know is that when you vote, the weight of your vote is determined by your BSQ stake. So we've talked about how buying BSQ directly compensates contributors. It turns out that having some extra BSQ on hand gives you a bigger say. So the more BSQ you have, the more your vote, the more weight your vote will hold.